everybody's favorite wizard boy is back and he's just as annoying as he was back in the day. Hey Garfathers, welcome to the very first set review of VBT-10 Phantom Dragon Aeon. And we're gonna start things big as we're gonna dive straight into the Shadow Paladin set review for this set. As this is probably the most hyped clan of this particular set. Because Luart is making its return in Sanders, as well as the big surprise of Phantom Blaster Overlord. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the cards themselves and see what this set has to offer for Shadow Paladin. And we're gonna start of course with the reprint triggers themselves and they got two new critical reprints and both of them are gonna be one stars as they're just generic reprints then on top of that they also got a new heal trigger in the likes of abyss grill but once again just a one star as we already have a heal trigger for the clan then while we're on the topic of new triggers we also got a new draw trigger for shadow Paladin, which is drag wizard bopped and this is gonna be a free star as it's a new inclusion to the draw trigger lineup then another new trigger that they got is of course the new sentinel critical triggers and for luart that is of course belial all everybody's favorite critical owl and this is going to be a five star because it's a new type of sentinel as well as a new type of critical which the clan now can experiment with now this set also brings back a reprint style type of card which is the special reprint and this time that is the great free searcher in the likes of cherishing knight brenwin so this is going to be a five star card as this is a staple card for the clan and basically a staple card for any clans that have these great free searchers so obviously a very nice reprint now another new card which can also be seen as a reprint is a new starter in the likes of drag prince root and it of course has the generic starter skill and it's going to be a one star for me in this case as it's once again just a generic starter but this time with a different name and a different artwork. Now Shadow Paladin also got a new type of vanilla in this set. Which for them is the grade 2 double crit variant in the like of Drag Fighter Meado. And this is going to be a 1 star for me as I'm not a fan of these double crit type of units. But you could say this could be somewhat useful for Shadow Paladin. As they can excel their force marker generation with of course Mordor Phantom and now with Luard. But in Luard's case it can already give their grade 1s an inherent extra crit so this means that the great ones will have the same value as this great two but on top of that the great ones can be searched out and probably have an additional skill so therefore this card is effectively useless. Now once we dive into the cards with actual skills. The first card that we're going to take a look at is this grade 2 which is Spall Bow. And it has the ability auto rigor circle. When it attacks this unit gets power plus 10k until the end of the battle. And at the end of the battle retire one of your rear guards. So it's basically an 18k attacker that forces you to retire something. Now this is going to be a 1 star for me because... It's an 8k grade 2, which already isn't really good, and retiring a unit just for 10k power buff isn't that great either. Now, another very interesting unit that we have is this grade 3, Knight of Exhaustion, Irrigat. And its abilities auto rigor circle when placed cost counter blast free and retire all of your other and your opponent's rear guards. So this is effectively a board nuke for both players. But it costs you free counter blast. And it's on a grade 3 with no force marker. I cannot see the use of this card in any situation whatsoever. So for that, I can only give it one star. It's probably just a joke card. Now, most of the great ones we're going to cover once we discuss Luard, as Luard gives us a better insight of what these great ones actually can do. But this particular great one is pretty interesting as it's in itself a pretty good support card for Clarets or Dragon as we have Hunter of Transgression Makdobar and Makdobar's abilities auto Vanguard at the Rear Guard Circle when placed cause discard a grade 1 card from your hand draw a card and one of your units get power plus 5k until the end of turn you could say this works for any type of build because it's just an inherent cycle card and gives a bit power but it works actually pretty damn good with Clarice or Dragon, as not only allows it to you to discard your grid ones, which you want to have in your drop zone, it is a cycle so, go, so you go faster for your deck and have a bigger chance to get to your Clarice sword, but on top of that, it also gives any unit, which includes your Vanguard, an additional 5k power. So this allows you to make your Clarice or Dragon a little bit more threatening, especially with the restand in mind. So for it being a cycle card, which is actually pretty decent, and you have that extra 5k power on top of that, which 
effectively doesn't cost you anything no counter bless no soul bless not so ever allows me to give this card a solid three star rating as i think it's a pretty decent card for shadow paladin in general and it is that extra little bit special for the clarit sword deck now with those generic ish cards out of the way let's dive into the first main archetypes per se support lineup and we start off with the second vr of this set which is phantom blaster overlord so let's take a look at overlord himself before we go into the direct support cards around this new boss unit so here we have Phantom Blaster Overlord and its abilities are Continuous Vanguard Circle. During your turn, if your soul has a Phantom Blaster Dragon, this unit gets power plus 10k and its original critical becomes 2. So it becomes a 23k beater with 2 crits. And because its original critical becomes 2 means you're going to play with Force 1. Having the Phantom Blaster Dragon in your soul might sound tedious as Phantom Blaster Dragon as a VR isn't really that great. And it means that this is a turn 4 play. But with the support cast around Phantom Blaster Overlord, it's suddenly a lot easier to attain this, and it makes it actually fast enough to do something in today's meta. Now, Phantom Blaster Overlord's second effect is Auto Vanguard Circle. When it attacks a Vanguard, cost Counter Blast 1 and retire any number of rearguards. Your opponent chooses the same number of his or her rearguards as the number of rearguards retired for this cost and retires them. Search your deck for up to one card with Blast in its card name, call to the Rearguard Circle, shuffle your deck, and the called unit gets power plus 10k until the end of turn. So basically, when it attacks for one counter blast, you can superior call a blast unit from your deck and it gets plus 10k power. This allows you to get four attacks off in a force clan, which is pretty nice. But on top of that, you can retire any amount of units and your opponent is forced to retire the same amount. So you basically destroy both fields. And as seen as Shadow Paladin has access to very good grade one search engines like Namain, which give you the freest pluses, makes this one for one trade probably more in your favor. So Phantom Blaster Overlord is a really strong field control card as well as an inherent multi tacker which can swing for a decent amount of number with the extra critical in mind. So that in itself already sounds pretty decent. But let's take a look at the support cast around him to actually see what this thing actually can do. Now, the first of these support cards is this great one, Freezing Witch Bende. And her ability is Act on Rearguard Circle. If your Vanguard is Blaster Dark, cost Soul Blast 1 and retire this unit. Search your deck for up to one Phantom Blaster Dragon, write it as stand, shuffle your deck, and the act abilities of that unit that was placed cannot be used until the end of turn. So effectively, if your Vanguard is a Blaster Dark, you can immediately superior right into a vanilla Phantom Blaster Dragon. This is actually pretty good because not only do you get a 13k base on your turn 2 play, it also comes with the inherent twin drive, which is similar to what Blaster Dark can do as it can attain the twin drive. But on top of that, you also get that force marker of the great free Phantom Blaster Dragon. And you might say, well, you lose the ability, so that's not as great. But the act abilities of Phantom Blaster Dragon aren't really that good either way in current day and age. So you don't really mind this trade off. What's even better is that this great one is a 5k so you can search it out with the main so this allows you to go in phantom blaster overlord on a much faster pace than it would be otherwise so bende is really really good but interesting enough it isn't restricted to the blaster archetype itself yes you need to have blaster dark as your vanguard and you need to ride into the phantom blaster dragon but besides that you can do whatever you want so this allows shadow Palin to have a superior ride engine at his disposal and that can be really powerful, especially if you also look at premium. So with that in mind, I think Bende is a solid 5-star card as it enables this whole engine. And yes, I am aware that the main is banned with Luart, but this goes way beyond what Luart can provide. As this is a solid engine for Shadow Paladin as a whole, and you can still run Bende in the Luart engine without the main, but it's less consistent. Now, the second part to this superior right engine to make it more consistent is this grade 2 Damn Hood Dragon. And its ability is Continuous of Rearguard Circle, if you have a Vanguard with Blaster in its card name, this unit gets power plus 5k. Okay, so it becomes a 10k attacker because it's a 5k body, so you can search out this with the main, but it then turns into a 10k grade 2, which is basically whatever every other grade 2 is. So it allows you to search out a grade 2 with the main, which is interesting, but its main application lies in its second ability, which is Act on Rearguard Circle, cost Soul as 1, and retire this unit. Search your deck for up to one Blaster Dark, review it, 
and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. So where Bende wants you to have a Blessed Ark on the Vanguard Circle to then immediately disappear right into a Phantom Blessed Dragon from your deck, Dampu Dragon allows you to get that Blessed Dark into your hand. And as soon as both of these units are 5k, what this engine wants you to do is call in the main on turn 1, use its ability to search out a Damp Hood Dragon on turn 1, use the Damp Hood Dragon to search out the Blessed Dark and put it into your hand. Next turn you write the Blessed Dark and then once again use the main to search out Bende to then immediately use the Superior Ride Engine. And because both Damp Hood Dragon and Bende use the Soul, means that your opponent cannot counterplay you as it doesn't require any counterblast. The only way how they can stop you is by retiring the, the main. But if they have no access to field control, then they basically are screwed and just look at you doing the whole superior right engine if you open up the domain in the early game. Now Dampu Dragon isn't as powerful as Bende as it doesn't inherently give you the superior right engine, it just makes the superior right engine a little bit more consistent. So for that I can only give it a 4 star card because it's less as impactful as Bende herself. But an interesting thought about this card is that because it searches out Blasted Dark, you could potentially use it as a support card for Mordred Phantom as it is a another way to attain your blessed dark for that whole deck so it's an interesting tech choice for that engine but i have no clue if that's gonna be a valid option or not but still a very interesting and good card to have now that we see the two support cards for phantom blaster overlord and basically the generic superior right engine for shadow Paladin, let's take a look back at phantom blaster overlord and see how good this card is now this card on paper sounds pretty pretty decent as it's a 23k beater with double crit and it can field nuke your opponent's side of the board as well as giving you an extra regular attack. But even with it all considered, I honestly cannot give this card more than 3 stars because as a boss unit this is actually pretty underwhelming. If you do not get the superior right engine off or you cannot go into Phantom Blaster Dragon first, this card is effectively pretty weak and being reliant on such a thing isn't really that good and if you couldn't get the superior right engine off successfully and you're forced to ride into phantom blaster dragon normally that means your first great free turn is super weak as phantom blaster dragon as a great free nowadays does absolutely nothing but even if this whole engine does what it's supposed to do the multi-attack is super limited because you're forced to only superior call a blaster unit blaster cards aren't really that good in Shadow Paladin. Most of them are just basic vanillas and you're probably gonna just appear a call either another copy of Phantom Blaster Overlord or a Phantom Blaster Dragon as they just make a decent number as they are 13k units so they hit magic numbers. But besides that, there aren't actually really good targets. The best targets after that is Blast the Dark, as it has an unplaced potential retire skill. But as seen as Overlord already can nuke the entire board, there's no reason to go into Blast the Dark and waste that counter blast. And going into Blast the Dark means you probably won't make a magic number unless you also have a booster ready to boost that secondary attack. So with it in mind, I honestly cannot give this card more than 3 stars, as it left so much to the desire for an actual good boss unit, and it is reliant on so many good things to actually go right and it's reliant on so many different pieces that the, that the deck just doesn't have maybe in the future when we get better blaster support then this card could actually be re really interesting as it has better targets but so far that's not the case now from one disappointing vr boss unit let's go over to a very promising and exciting new vr boss unit for shadow paladin as all the new rage is into this wizard boy which is Dragheart luart and before we go into the supporting cast around him let's of course see what this vr has in mind because his abilities are act on vanguard circle once per turn cost retire two great one rear guards draw a card Choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. So basically, you go break even on this skill. As you go minus two on your units, but you draw one card, so that's a minus one in total, and you retire one unit of your opponent's side, so you break even at zero in card economy. This is actually pretty decent and actually pretty good because you not only get extra draws, you also retire some from your opponent's field, but you can easily rebuild your field no problem. And as soon as it doesn't cost you a countless or soul bless, this is an excellent way to keep your pressure up and your value engine going, which is actually what Luart is known for. So this is already a pretty good skill, but definitely not warrants enough to make a boss unit VR status. That's in its following ability. Because its second effect is Act on Vanguard Circle once per turn, this ability cost is reduced by a Counter Blast 1 for each Great 1 in your drop zone. Cost, Counter Blast free, return 2 normal units from your drop zone to your deck, search your deck for up to 1 Drag Drive Luard, ride it to stand, and shuffle your deck. 
at the end of this turn, ride a drag hard Luard from your soul as rest. So it's basically the Gear Chronicles Superior Ride Engine, but it's locked to a specific grade 3. But I'm already going to spoil this one, but you probably already know. Drag Drive Luard has a Force Marker. So once you ride, you get a Force Marker. You do the Superior Ride, you get another Force Marker. And at the end of the turn, you go back into Luard and get your third Force Marker in a turn. So this allows you to accumulate a lot of power very rapidly. Which is pretty insane if you think about it. But on top of that, this card allows you to shuffle back cards into your deck. So this inherently can shuffle back the Drag Drive Luard you want to target if you're out of targets. But it can also allow you to shuffle back key pieces that you're going to Superior Call with Drag Driver. And that can also be the units that you just retired with Luard's first ability. So you see that these abilities can cycle into each other to have infinite value over turns and turns and turns. But you can say it costs free Counter Blast. But you can already assume, and I've seen many occasions where this is a fact, this Counter Blast cost could just have been written off the skill, as it's so easy to have free grade ones into the drop zone by the moment that you want to acquire this skill. First of all, you can just Soul Blast your st uh, your Grade 1 Ride Target, that's already one. And just by resolving his act ability before you use his secondary effect, you already just shoved two more Grade 1s into the drop zone and you're basically done and you acquired the condition for that. It's very likely that this secondary cost is free. So Dragard Luard is a free boss unit that enables a lot of things. But, to understand even better how powerful Luard actually is, let's take a look at the supporting cards around him, and we're going to start off with, of course, Drag Driver Luard himself. So, Drag Driver Luard is a great free with a Force Marker, and it has the following skills. Continuous of Anger Circle, during your turn, this unit gets power plus 5k for each of your Grade 1 Rear Guards. If you have two or more Grade 3 cards in the soul, the original critical of all your Grade 1 Rear Guards becomes 2. So this becomes more and more powerful the more and more great ones you have on the field. And it has the potential to give all those great ones an inherent double critical. And because of this, and the fact that Luard has the whole superior ride acceleration of your force markers, it's obvious that you're going to play with force one, making your columns really, really big. And now also your Vanguard column will be really big thanks to Drag Driver Luard. Now the condition to have two or more great free cards in your soul is pretty easy to fulfill because this can already be fulfilled on your turn four play because you write Luard, you superior ride into this Luard, and then once again you rewrite that Luard ward onto the soul but then the following turn you do the skill again and the moment that you superior ride the drag driver you now have two lewards in your soul but it gets even crazier because this card inherently allows you to get those great ones onto the board to not only get powerful plays but to also acquire a lot of value because Luard's secondary effect is auto vanguard circle when placed costs counter blast one search your deck for up to the number of cards in the soul with Luard in their card name plus one grade one cards Come to the regular circle and shuffle your deck. So to clarify what they actually mean, the moment that you ride this Luard, you look at the amount of Luards in your soul, add that number up with one, and that is the amount of great ones that you can superior call for one single counter blast. So if you have one Luard in the soul, you can superior call two great ones. If you have two Luards in the soul, you can superior call three great ones, etc, etc. So it's very easy to, out of nowhere, fill the entire board with great ones. And this is what I refer to with the previous Luard, the VR Luard, that you retire two grid ones to get the draw and retire of, because you can immediately fill out the board again thanks to this Luard, so you get actually free value over all your skills. And a lot of effects within Shadow Paladin either revolves on great ones that have specific effects that only activate when they are superior called, so this card can forcefully activate those effects, but it also allows you to get your entire deck as a toolbox engine, as you can get whatever great one that you want and immediately plop them onto the board. So it's very easy to just run two offs or one offs for particular situations, because on top of the already toolbox that you have from your deck, the other reward allows you to shuffle cards from your drop zone back into the deck turn after turn, so you will have always access to the pieces that you need. So you can already see how devastatingly powerful this whole deck can be by only looking at the two Luard Great Freeze. So you wouldn't be surprised by the fact that I would give this card 5 stars as it's an incredibly powerful boss unit that allows you to do all types of things. But to have a better understanding to even how crazy the things can be Let's take a look at the new great ones that this set provides for Luard. And before we go into the great ones, I want to clarify something beforehand, before people going to go crazy about certain ratings. 
Even though these Great Ones synergize automatically with Luart and can be therefore really powerful because they can be searched up whenever and that means you can have access to their skill on demand, that doesn't inherently make those Great Ones that better than they already are. Because don't forget, these Great Ones aren't specifically for Luart itself. They also have their role within Shadow Paladin as a whole clan. So I'm gonna rate these cards by what they provide to the clan as a whole. Yes, they will be crazy with Luart, but any great one is crazy with Luart because you will have consistent access to them wherever they might be. But that's not the power of the great ones, that's the power of Luart. So with that said, let's take a look at the first great one, which is specifically support for Luart, which is Drag Wizard Nice. And Nice has the abilities Autumn Vanguard Circle, when placed, look the seven cards from the top of your deck, reveal up to one Drag Heart Luart or Drag Wizard Leofall from among them, Put it in your hand and shuffle your deck. So this is generic consistency plus engine for the specific grade 2 and the main VR Luart. Both of these cards are really good and allow you to do a lot of interesting things for the deck. So this is already a pretty decent skill. But then on top of that, it also has a skill, Auto Rigor Circle, when placed by your card's ability, cost Soul Bless 1. Your opponent chooses one of his or her rear guards and retire it. Overall, I think this is a solid free star card as it adds a little bit more consistency to the deck as it searches out your main VR Luard, which you want to have on your Vanguard Circle, and it allows you to search out the Grade 2, which can enable you to do even more interesting things. But its unplace effect on the Rear Guard Circle is pretty alright. I think having the retire for a Soul Blast is nice and all, but I don't think that's gonna be your main play. But by having a couple of copies in your deck, it means you have consistent access to rearguard snipes on top of the rearguard snipe that you will have with Blue Arts main effect. Now, the second new grade one that we have is Abyssal All, and this is another 5k grade one with the skill Auto One Finger the Rearguard Circle. This ability cost may be paid with Soul Blast 1 if the grade of your and your opponent's Vanguard are the same. So basically, if you went second. When place, cost Counter Blast 1 and draw a card. So either it's Counter Blast 1 to draw a card, or it's Soul Blast 1 to draw a card. This is effectively a different version of Blackwing Swordbreaker. As Swordbreaker has the skill Counter Blast 1 to draw a card, but it could potentially get another 5k if it was called from hand. But you probably never want to call it from hand, so in those scenarios, Abyss Style is basically better, as in the worst case scenario, it costs you the same, but in certain situations, it, you can pay it for a Soul Blast, which can actually be really, really good if you want to get that extra draw in the early game. So overall, it's a pretty good draw engine, and it can even synergize with Namain because it's a 5k unit. But keep in mind, Namain is banned with Luard, so you cannot utilize that in the Luard engine. So you can either use it as a generic draw engine in whatever Shell Palant deck you play, or you can of course synergize this with Drag Driver Luard, as it can be one of your targets that you superior call to the field if you need those extra draws. But overall, Overall, I think it's a solid 4-star card. You might give it a 5-star card rating, but inherently it's just an extra draw engine that is very versatile, but it definitely will not push the games on itself. Now, another new 5k grid one that we have is Knight of Accomplishment, Dila Elt. And Dila Elt has the ability Auto Rigor Circle, when placed by your card effect, Souls Charge 1. This ability may only be used by a card with the same card name once a turn. So this is basically a Soul Charge engine that we can acquire on demand if we play in the main. The same rules apply with the main Luard. So in any other generic Shadow Paladin deck, you can combine this with the main to have an on-demand Soul Charge engine. And with Luard, you can combine it with Drag Driver to superior card from the deck. But in Drag Driver's Luard's case, I honestly would not play this card as you have better options to acquire soul because you have a great one named Nightmare Painter which allows you to put units from your drop zone into the soul which is arguably better because you have control over what goes into the soul. Of course you can only put lower grades in it so you cannot forcefully put great freeze in it so that's probably the only possibility that makes this card better as you have the chance to soul charge great freeze early on so you can get more value but that's just rng and within that same rng you could potentially soul charge the trigger which you really don't want to do so overall i would give it a free star card as it's not a way to have a consistent soul charge engine or just resource engine within any shadow paladin build but might or might not be actually that useful for luard himself but can definitely be played in whatever other shadow paladin deck you might have now another very interesting 5k grade one that we have is knight of strict order suels and this grade one has the effect continuous of rigor circle if you have five or more grade one rear guards this unit gets power plus 15k so if you're bored is filled with grade ones it's a 20k booster or attacker now 
I would personally give this card only two stars. And you might think to yourself, this card should be higher because it's a very integral card for the Luart engine as it allows you to beat for really high numbers on top of the force markers you already accelerate. And yes, I do agree that this card is pretty good in the Luart deck itself, but that's mainly because Luart can superior call all those great ones onto the board and easily fulfill the condition of this card. But in most other Shadow Paladin decks, this condition is actually quite annoying because building an entire board out of grade ones is actually harder to do than you might think. And yes, this card can be searched out with the main, which can be used for those other Shadow Paladin decks, but most other Shadow Paladin decks still rely on specific grade two cards or maybe a grade three card that allows you to push your engine. Like maybe this can be played in Clarice or Dragon, but Clarice or Dragon has very important grade twos. Mordred Phantom cannot utilize this as you have your Blaster Darks. And Phantom Blaster Dragon or Phantom Blaster Overlords, yeah, let's not talk about that because that's probably not actually being played. So that's the reason why I can only give this card two stars because yes, it might be interesting for Luard and could be attack options. You're, you're definitely not gonna play four off of this card in whatever Luard deck you're playing, but once we go away from Luard or we go to a different direction, I do not see a future potential of this card because the condition of this card is a little bit annoying. Now, another great one which you might think is a lot better because of Luard is this great one, Hardship Sage Decron, because its ability is continuous or record circle. If you have a great free or greater Vanguard, all of your front row grade one units get intercept. So because Luard can superior call grade ones to the field, you can utilize them as interceptors so you get that little bit more extra shield value. And if you compare them with grade two interceptors, you get 5k more shield. But even with that said, I can only give this card once again only a two star rating because yes, in Luard you would get more value in, in the long run, but... In general, that's not a lot of extra value you generate for playing this grade one. And on top of that, you might not even want to intercept with those grade ones because for one, your opponent can potentially just retire them beforehand because control is definitely prevalent in the format. So they might just be destroyed and that means this grade one is a vanilla unit that doesn't really do anything. But on top of that, if you do not have uh, enough units onto the board, you might rather want to use those great ones as sacrifice fodder for Luar to get retires yourself or more draw engines as it will give you probably more value over the long run. But once we look outside of Luar, that's where this card actually becomes really weak because you don't really have a lot of great ones to work with this card as efficiently as most other decks. You could combine this with the main a little bit, but that depends on how effectively you could utilize your main to keep generating great ones to have this great one to intercept. But even in the early game, you won't be able to activate this as you need to be on grade three. So that means it will take to the mid to late game and probably the game won't be prolonged long enough to actually acquire value over this great one. It is playable in Luard and you can see decks with a with one or two copies to have that little bit of extra shield value but this is definitely not a very powerful card in my opinion now those were the new grade ones so let's take a look at the higher grades and first of those cards is drag wizard bua griu and bua griu has the ability on a rearguard circle when it attacks a vanguard if you have three or more grade one rearguards this unit gets power plus 10k until the end of that battle cost Count plus one and draw a card. So this is easy to fulfill with Luar, as you can easily flood the board with grid ones. But even then, why would you want to play this card? Because you actually want to tech with your grid ones as they have the potential of having that inherent extra critical. So having a 20k unit that can potentially counter plus one for a draw isn't really that great, even in Luard. And outside of Luard, it's pretty bad. I'm honestly only giving them one star as I see no actual value in this particular drag wizard. Now in the same vein we have a great free which is Witch of Sculptured Group Anelin and Anelin has the ability auto Vanguard the rearguard circle. When it attacks if you have four or more grade one rearguards this unit gets power plus 20k until the end of the battle. Once again a one star for me because it's just a powerful beater but the condition is quite annoying and you would never play this in Luard because it's a great free. And even if it's a great two, why would you? As there are better great two targets and you may mostly want to play with great ones. But outside of Luard, it's even harder to fulfill this condition. And still, it's just an extra 10, 20k power. So what's the point? Now, with those questionable higher grade cards, let's take a look at a duo of grade twos that are actually good for the Luard engine. As the first one that we have is Drag Wizard Leo Fall. Which has the ability auto vanguard to rigor circle when placed, cost count plus one, search your deck for up to one grade one card, call to the open rigor circle, and shuffle your deck. So this is a plus one that filters your deck for a specific grade one. Now, 
this has a lot of options. Outside of the Lewart engine, you can combine this with a domain as this can be your domain searcher and that domain can immediately give you even more value over time. But in Lewart, we cannot do that. But in Lewart, we have other options. We can call any of the great ones that we discussed so far that can give our draw power in the likes of Abyssal Owl, or we can acquire the Soul Church engine. But a really good target for this is Charon, because Charon allows us to use Soul to get counter charge, and it can become an 11k unit. So by combining these two cards together, you basically get that great one out of your deck, and it gets an extra 3k power by only soul blasting a card. And because you soul blast, that means you can soul blast the grade one that you just write and already set up for your Luar turn the moment that you write into Luar next turn. So this is a really good card in combination with Charon. But there are many more options for this card as it allows you to search any grade one from your deck if you miss that specific key piece for a combo play that you want to do during your later turns. So Drag Wizard Leofall is a pretty good grade two. And for that, I will give it a four star rating as its skill is simple, but it's very effective. Now, another great two, which is insanely powerful, is Drag Wizard Morfessa. And she has the abilities, continues on Rearguard Circle and deck. If you have a Vanguard with Luartin's card name, this unit gets grade minus one. So it's effectively a grade one in your deck, so it's going to be searched out with Luart, which is pretty good, as you now have grade ones, but also this grade two. Because it's also a grade one onto the field, it can potentially get the inherent extra critical. Now, her second ability, which makes her actually insane, is Auto Rearguard Circle. At the end of the battle, it attacked. If you have four or more rearguards with original grade one, so that means you cannot combine it with herself or another copy, as she is not originally a grade one, cause counter blast one and retire this unit and call up to one grade one from your drop zone to the rearguard circle. So this effectively allows you to get one extra attack off in your Luar deck. So you don't swing with three attacks, you swing in with four attacks. And that extra attack also has the potential inherent critical. And because Luard can acquire a lot of force markers, means you will get more value out of those force markers and making that extra multi-attack grade one that more devastating. But interesting enough, Morfessa isn't actually restricted to Luart. You can put this into any Shadow Paladin deck and you have the potential of that one extra attack off. As if you combine this with Phantom Blaster Overlord, you could potentially get five attacks because you have a field full of grade ones and a Morfessa. You attack with the Morfessa, get that extra attack off, and then an attack once again. And once you attack with your Phantom Blaster Overlord, you can use its effect to superior call a Blaster from your deck and acquire that extra fifth attack so that's actually a pretty decent interaction but if we stay in luard we can use morfessa to also acquire five attacks within luard if we combine her with apocalypse bat because apocalypse bat is a great one that allows you to superior call another copy of itself from the soul the moment that it's placed onto the rigor circle so if you have an apocalypse bat in your soul and you superior call an apocalypse bat from the drop zone onto the field with morfessa you can immediately call the other apocalypse bat to the other column and have again two great ones standing in the front row which can be devastating so as you can see morfessa opens up the playing ground for a lot of interesting combinations in whatever shadow paladin deck you might think of so for that morfessa is a solid five star cards which makes the Luard engine incredibly powerful so with everything now discussed let's go back to Dragheart Luard and see what Luard actually has to offer so Luard has field control draw power as well as consistent access to going into drag driver Luard and it therefore allows you to generate a lot of force markers and going into drag driver Luard means we have a very strong finger unit that can give her great ones potentially inherent criticals and it allows us to superior call set grade ones to the field. And with all those powerful grade ones that we have that can give us draw engine, it gives us soul, potential multi-text, and extra beatable columns, basically tells us that Drag Hard Luart is a solid five-star card. I don't have to explain why that's the case. There is a reason why this card was top tier the moment that it came out. And this is without the main and without the superior right engine because you could play the superior right engine into this to have faster access to your inherent criticals and even more force markers on your very first great free turn but luckily with the main hit makes that engine a little bit inconsistent but even then Luart is insanely powerful and will probably stay powerful as long as we get more and more great ones for Shadow Palin as it's just the generic toolbox for what Luart can do with them so yeah Luart 
obvious five star card and the support line around it is insanely strong but at the same time also a pretty unique deck as it gives you so many options so many lines of plays which is something that we haven't seen in standard and it's something that has slowly been creeping around into the format ever since vbt08 so yeah luart Pretty Gucci. So, as we've seen, Shadow Paladin got a lot of interesting new supports. We have some generic cards, but the main bulk of it is either the Superior Right Engine with Phantom Blaster Overlord at its center, and of course the entire Luard package, which, which is insanely strong, but also opens up so many lines of plays. And there is a reason why so many people are fan of Luard, and there is a reason why so many people hate Luart. So whatever side of the fence you might find yourself, it is probably has to do something with this particular set. So with that said, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this new support for Shadow Pelon. Are you excited for Luart or are you super dreadful what it actually is going to do? And maybe you're not even interested in Luart and more on the side of Phantom Lester Overlord. Who knows? Everybody has his own cup of tea. This video has been brought to you by our lovely patrons over at patreon.com slash Fangit Insider. You guys are amazing if you do want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel you can simply go to patreon.com slash insider and become a patron today but with that said i'm mr time leap and i see you guys in the next one